Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. And on the line with us today, we have George R. Worthington. We're going to be discussing his new book, Running with Frogs, a Navy Memoir. George was brought to People of Distinction today by some of the best movers in the business, Authors Press Publishing. If you have a book that you'd like moved, move it through Authors Press. You can find them at AuthorsPress.com. And guys, listen, you know, I am so excited to have George here on the line with us today because, you know, really, listen, we all know about the military, right? We all know about military service and, of course, what comes along with it in in terms of the major theme and and, and the major outlook that everybody kind of sees when they think of the military is war, right? And what that sets upon our country, how that sets upon other countries that we interact with, and really just the, the the lasting effects of that. And unfortunately, that's really a lot of times what people think about when they think about the military. And the reason why I'm so excited to have George here on the line with us is because he's going to be discussing from his own point of view, from his own perspective, from his time serving in the Navy, the other side of the coin. Right. And a lot of the positives that come along with serving in the military. And listen, at the end of the day, nobody likes war. Right. And and that's not something that we we ever really want to strive for. But we do understand that that is an inevitable um, that it's an inevitable consequence. Right. Things happen that way. But George is going to be here on the line with us. And the book that he's bringing to our table is really going to go, as I stated, and discuss You know, the military service and the many opportunities that they offer for growth. Um, And there's a lot more than meets the eye. And I'm so excited to have George here to explain that with us. So without further ado, we have George here on the line. George, first and foremost, man, thank you so much for being a guest with us on People of Distinction. How are you today? Yes, sir. My pleasure. Delighted to be here. Fantastic. Glad you selected me. Yeah, well, listen, man, we are just as delighted to have you here. And and again, I think that the, a, a book of this magnitude is really pertinent in terms of understanding all facets of military service, you know, and really shedding a lot of light on those positive uh, uh, things that can be taken and pulled from it. So without further ado, let's jump right in, George. Running with Frogs, a Navy memoir. Tell us about the book. Well, the book basically has a couple of audiences to it. It's uh, Naval Special Warfare, the SEALs and the Special Boat Units. Mm-hmm. These units originated in the Second World War. SEALs from the underwater demolition teams and scouts and raiders. And then the SEALs came in to be with the Vietnam accent in 1962. And uh, they re-stood up the SEAL team in place of the UDTs to have more visibility and the second audience would be other services and civilians that might be interested in how the Navy operates in combat and, and, and unit growth they're from, they're from. Mm-hmm. growth is of concern it takes only a few it takes a year to turn out a SEAL operator plus a few years in the team the other taxpayers might be interested in how the SEALs do their training in fact this week your hell week is going on You'll get about five hours sleep the entire week. Wow. The three full review is published in every SEAL qualification training ceremony. They're, they're, they're standing up new SEALs, graduations every every two months in Coronado, California. One other thing that the book really shows is that it's possible to have, to have two, two basic careers in, in the Navy Special Warfare and the surface warfare, I did both. In the, in the old days, I World War II, you had to have two years in the team, in the ships, rather, to uh, before you could go to underwater demolition team. That changed, of course, with Vietnam, but it shows that the uh, the uh, just the uh, available opportunities in in the service mm-hmm. to find to find yourself in, in some. Uh, purpose to 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 keep continue serving. 
I graduated from the Naval Academy in 1961, went immediately to the surface line, was a flag lieutenant for an admiral, and then I went to UDT Team 11 and stayed Naval Special Warfare throughout the time I retired in 1992. But the book, I hope, shows us that there's a lot more to the service than just shooting. In fact, with this current plague we got going, the, the, the Marine, the, the Army, Engineers did quite a job on setting up a hospital in Manhattan. So there's an awful lot can be said for the services beyond just the, the, the war fighting. Absolutely. You know, well, first and foremost, George, I, listen, man, thank you very much for your service. I mean, long time service. Thank you so much for that. And, you know, what I what I loved about the way you answered the question and really about going into the, the synopsis of the book, there's so much to it. Right. And. It's really so much from an educational standpoint. You know, you don't write this book just solely from your experience and what you dealt with. You're writing it from multiple standpoints, right? You're writing it from, of course, your standpoint as a soldier in there. But you're also, again, doing an educational stand front for, you know, just everyday common citizens like myself that can read this book and, again, be educated, learn so much more about the military and about the Navy specifically in terms of what is offered uh, aside from, as you stated, just shooting guns. Right. And I and I think that that is so important and such a unique way to branch upon this, because, of course, there's a lot of books written about military service. Um, but you've, again, taken it a step further to not only write about the service, but also educate a lot of just the the readers to know whether they have any military background or not to really understand what what takes place and how that moves so thank you very much for that now moving on to the next question that i have is really it's such an intriguing title right i mean of course a navy memoir pretty straightforward we got that but the actual title of the book before the subtitle is Running with Frogs. I mean, talk to me and talk to our listening audience about how you developed that title creatively and brought that into fruition. Well, it, 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 it happened so that in World War II, they started doing beach recons and demolition explosions, and they became known as frogmen. Mm. So, in fact, the SEALs can even be called frogmen. But it was unique to the Navy, and uh, <laughs> they don't have a core of engineers, but they sometimes do because they they set up what those standards are going to be for construction in the country. But uh, nevertheless, it, uh, it it does show that there's two ways to go in a service, and the closing out of one doesn't necessarily close the door on something else. Absolutely. But, but, Running, running is important, as is swims. In fact, we're going through Hell Week right now. I mentioned that earlier. That uh, it might be interesting. Each student co completed a minimum of 63 cumulative weeks of high-risk training. Each student ran approximately 1,780 miles through time runs, conditioning runs, and other mil mil miscellaneous uh, evolutions. Each student swam 136 miles. Each student ran the obstacle course approximately 42 times. Each student hiked patrol over 150 miles during training. Each student conducted at least 43 dives while spending a minimum of 65 hours or two and a half days under the water on dive status. The class expended over a million rounds of small arms ammunition. They detonated nearly 15,000 pounds of high explosives and has done the equivalent of swimming from Cuba to the southern tip of Florida, then running to New York City. So they do an awful lot of physical training in the, in the 14 months it takes to go from civilian to Navy SEAL operator with your breast insignia. And uh, it's a challenging, in fact, tonight, Wednesday night is when they get the, get the largest number of kids uh, to, uh, to quit Hell, we. In fact, my son is down there, one of the cadre, running the show right now. So he's he's up he's up at all nights in the middle, as well as I was when I did it. So, oh my goodness, you know, 
That is absolutely, well, it's appropriately termed Hell Week. I mean, wow. You know, listen, coming from, from my background, I have been raised with, you know, in a very big family, a lot of older brothers, and I've played sports all my life. And we were put through a lot of rigorous training, of course, prior to the season starting. And I thought I had, you know, a, a, a pretty good training regiment that way. Uh, hearing you speak, that is absolutely incredible. Now, really, just for my own curiosity, a question that comes from that. I mean, so it's it's named Hell Week, but all of that that you mentioned in terms of the specific obligations that each student has to accomplish that all that doesn't just take place during one week you said it takes place during a 14 month uh, training over course. over over a year even that i mean that is so much work over just one year that is absolutely incredible yeah they've, they've done very well with it too i can i can attest <laughs> speaking from first-hand experience right exactly <laughs> All right, guys, you know, listen, taking a quick break. We're here on the line with George R. Worthington discussing his book, Running with Frogs, a Navy memoir. Follow up question to that, George, is talk to us about your inspiration. I mean, obviously, you've spent a lot of time in the military and, you know, with military service that way. So it doesn't sound like, you know, an author, being an author was something that was, you know, always high on the list or maybe it was. Talk to our listening audience about your inspiration, not only behind writing this particular book, but in terms of specific people or authors that maybe inspired you to embark on this creative journey of being a writer. I'll have to get into the writing part slowly because uh, you do a lot of it as, as an officer in the Navy mm -hmm. and uh, you, sometimes you can use a grease pencil and use the big letters. But the Navy flyer in the Second World War cited, cited sub sank same. So getting, getting close to your subject helps and uh, checking on the facts is, uh, folks, we're seeing a lot of that in the presidential campaigns that are taking place. Is mm -hmm. who's who's on base and who's right. Absolutely. When you're a writer, things kind of bounce back and hit you. And uh, but I don't wanted to get this off my not my chest, but uh, just out there to, to see how I fared and did well. And it, it, it's amazing that you're able to change uh, service employment. And still, still achieve what you think you're going to to to, to achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think up some more articles of information here, but they yeah. they do an awful lot. A lot of people in naval special warfare, about five thousand active duty operators, and support personnel is about four thousand. Civilian personnel is over a thousand. The total of about ten thousand people work with in the Navy for the Naval Special Warfare, and that includes uh, civilians as well. So a lot oh, of information okay. to be able to be to be gathered. Now, in terms of being a writer, was this uh, an interest of yours since you were very young, or how did that develop? Well, that just developed through the service. You have to become a writer, get your thoughts down on paper, and uh, if you're out seeing ships or doing the blinker fly, blinker lights. The sighted same sub sub is kind of unique, but it, it, it covers what they, how fast and how much they want you to to, uh, to own up to, if you will. Mm -hmm. Good writing helps. Absolutely, yeah. So, so it sounds like it was really something that developed, you know, almost as a hobby or something that you know just kind of helped pass the time during your service, and ultimately equated to this book uh, that that you went on to write. It's a, it's a way of also letting my children know. I had three three kiddos, one each, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, to let them know what their dad. In fact, daddy's home. Spent a lot of time on that with the sailors and the Marines and the Army, going overseas and coming back. Daddy's home will always meet me at the auto at the entry of the house. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Now, from your perspective, I know we you discussed what your inspiration was. You discussed how, you know, where this idea originated from and, you know, a lot of uh, uh, your experience that way. But why talk to our listening audience, George? Why did you think that this was a book that was best utilized being written and published for the masses and not something that you just, again, wrote down for your kids so that they knew what you were doing? And just to get your thoughts on page, uh, on paper, why was it something that you felt needed to be written? It's a, it's a, it's a broad subject, and uh, for, for many years, the SEALs were not basically understood by the service, and uh, it's done, come, come a long way since then, and just to let the kids know that uh, Dad was there, and here's, here's, there's a snapshot, because the, the book isn't that large, and it's, you know, you can read it in a weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, it lets them know that they, they can associate with it. Beautiful. Well, I'm sure, you know, as as you're talking, man, I mean, listen, it sounds like such an impressive journey that you've taken. And I'm sure your kids, as well as the rest of your family, is very proud of everything that you were able to accomplish. And, of course, as you stated before, one of your sons is also in the military, correct? I mean, he's... he's, he's yes, he's he is chief petty officer. Fantastic, right? So he followed in your footsteps that way. So you clearly made a big impact, as you rightly should, because, again, your journey sounds so impressive. Now... Last question that we're gonna go that we're gonna go into here about your book Running with Frogs, a Navy memoir, is we've already discussed a lot of different themes and a lot of different nuances to the book. But if there's one central message that you really want our listening audience here at People of Distinction to know about your book, George, what would that message be? That uh, that their sons and Maybe sooner their daughters are involved in special operations, and that there's an awful lot of uh, background required to do that job, both in the service and uh, in the civilian life. You know, the roles of the of the uh, marshals and the cops on the beat and stuff like that that uh, mm-hmm. they come across. And we have a lot of kids that get out and try to sign up for the FBI and go into uh, security. And uh, it, it, it's just, it, it's an, it, it looks around and, and, and cries for security. And I thought the book, you know, said a little bit about that and, and the, the equipment and stuff that's required for it. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that that education, that realization is very, very important. And, you know, as I stated when we first started this interview, there's so much more than meets the eye, right? Um, And a lot of what is offered through the military goes... Uh, unfortunately, you know, it, it goes unacknowledged a lot of times because, as you stated, right, a lot of people just kind of see the fact that you're going there, you're going to be learning how to shoot wep- shoot guns, right, and, and control weapons. But there's so much more in terms of the training that can be gathered and really uh, put to, to, to positive use there. So wonderful. Now, kind of transitioning from this book, I always like when I'm talking to my authors to to really, after we focus, of course, on their book, right? We, we just finished discussing Running With Frogs, a Navy memoir. So we gave the book the, the proper amount of time that it, that it needed. But I always love to pass the torch, right? And really educate other writers that are embarking upon this journey as well. And having you here on the line, having completed your book, talk to our listening audience and talk to our young writers, what are some piece of it, uh, pieces of advice that you can give to them preparing for this journey that they're about to embark upon? First, I would say to get a theme. If you something that's mm-hmm. going on in your life that makes you wildly ecstatic, go ahead and write about it. Get a letter or a memo and then expand on it. And then the, the, the next thing would be to check your steps, your steps, your... Uh, the facts of a, of a piece of paper, you know, make sure it's correct mm-hmm. and reflects the legitimacy of the people, of the people, which of course has to, has to work for the for the book itself. Editing, you'll you will find out is just, is almost as hard as the writing. Getting it right, getting <laughs> right. The, getting the spelling right, and uh, the facts straight count. 
that's the that's the real challenge of a of a piece of uh, you know material. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it sounds like it, right? One thing that I can attest, I'm not a writer. Uh, but of course, you know, through all my years of education, all the way even through my master's program, you know, that editing process, as you stated, can almost be just as difficult as writing the project itself. Uh, well, I can attest to that. I mean, simple mistakes a lot of times will go unnoticed and having a, you know, a, a third eye to kind of really glance over the work and edit it um, can definitely go a long way. And of course, with any project, right, doing the research, making sure that you're crossing your T's, dotting your I's and, and gathering all the correct information uh, to put out there. Great, great pieces of information there for our young listeners, George. Guys, here again on the line with George R. Worthington. We finished discussing his book, Running with Frogs, a Navy memoir. But that's not it, guys. Listen, that's the, the, the book that George has put out himself. There's actually another book that he uh, was also writing on and developed in partnership with uh, another artist. George, tell us a little bit about that other book, please. The other book is a photo history of the SEALs descending from the scouts and raiders to the sand guys and the Naval Special Warfare underwater demolition teams. They developed because of the requirement to have the beaches of the amphibious landings checked out for mines and obstacles. Then they expanded into uh, basically land warfare with the uh, with the Vietnam fracas, which also had the special boat squadrons involved. Wow. Yeah, listen, so much to be get. If you're a fan of adventure, if you're a fan of war stories this way, I mean, there's so much to be gathered here. Uh, guys, listen, I, I don't know about you, but I'm so impressed uh, b by the book that we just discussed. And, and again, my eyes have been open to because I was definitely one of those people that when I viewed the military service, I for myself, you know, I have a lot of friends that have enlisted in the military. And I remember growing up, there was a lot of times that I questioned why they were doing it. And, you know, over the years from speaking to them, my perception has changed and really understood why the military offers so many benefits and it's not for everyone just like some people are meant for it right and it's really just depending on the cloth that you are cut from but there's no doubt that there is a lot of positives to be gained by enlisting and by joining the military not only for your military service and what you're going to be committed to while you're there but really the education in the preparation that it's going to give you for the rest of your life's journey um, and there's so many positives to be garnished so definitely get on out there whatever you have to do get your hands on running with frogs a navy memoir i promise you you will not be disappointed the education that you'll receive is second to none george r worthington thank you so much for being a guest with us on people of distinction we truly appreciated you being here with us you're welcome